Hello and welcome back to DivideTheWord.blog. Today's topic is about tithes and offerings and is tithing for New Testament Christians today. Now I've already written a blog article about this. I'm going to post the article in the link to this video or in the description. There's much more detail in the article than I'm going to go into today to keep this short for you. But I wanted to talk about the question and try to answer it, is tithing for New Testament Christians? And I believe the short answer is no. Is sacrificial giving and giving for the kingdom of God for New Testament Christians today? Yes, of course it is. But I want to cover the topic about uh, churches and modern evangelical preachers who are trying to persuade you that if you don't give them your money, God is going to curse you. Now, I have a companion article and a companion video about Malachi chapter 3 and verses 8 through 10 and how that was used out of context. We know from that video, we know from that study, that the conversation between God and the priesthood in Malachi chapter 3 and chapter 1 and 2 was uh, to what I just said, the priesthood. Malachi 1 1 starts off with, to the nation of Israel. Malachi 2 1 starts off with, to the priests, this is my commandment for you. And then Malachi chapter 3 was actually a prophetical a message about the future kingdom of the Israelites after the Gentile bride is taken from the earth. And so that whole conversation about tithing was again to the nation of Israel, the Levitical priesthood, and in that sense, a future occurrence. So is tithing for New Testament Christians? And what is a tithe? Well, very quickly, a tithe was a taxation on the people of Israel as it was a theocracy, this was a government tithe, to fund the work of the ministry, the Levitical priesthood. When the 12 tribes came out of Egypt in bondage and finally made their way into the promised land, God divided up the lands that were given them from the promised land to all the tribes except Levi's. And their purpose was to actually serve in the temples, serve the uh, God of the Hebrew nation, and to perform the sacrifices uh, that were required for the atonement of sin and, and the sacrifice for peace offering, for a sin offering, etc. It was the priest's job to do that. And because they had no land to grow their own crops, to have their own fields, to have their own livestock, <clears throat> the taxation from the Jewish nation, the 10% tithe of their annual livestock and produce was given to feed and this is an important concept to understand, to feed the priests as they ministered their duty so that they wouldn't have to worry about providing for their physical nutrition. Now, this is exampled all throughout the Bible. And, and we, when we bring in the question, is this for New Testament Christians, we realize that in the New Testament, there's only a few times in Matthew, in Luke, and in Hebrews where tithing and is, is even mentioned. Two times by Jesus... It was a criticism to the hypocrites, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, saying, you tithe of your mint and your oils, your cumin, but you ignore what's more important. And then in Hebrews, it talked about the tithe being given to the Levitical priesthood by Abraham and Abraham's seed, which was the Hebrew nation. Again, going back to Malachi 3.1, that this was to the Hebrew nation or the nation of Israel. So nowhere in the New Testament church does the Bible talk about, command, or set as a requirement that you tithe. And furthermore, the tithe was always on food, livestock, and the, the produce of the fields, their oil, their corn, whatever they could develop by the land. Now some folks have ignorantly said that that's because they didn't have money. They didn't have finances like we do today. Their only option was to give of their livestock and of their crops. Well, this just simply isn't true. As early as we can find Abraham in Genesis purchasing a field to bury his wife with money. Later on in Genesis, it says, any slave that you purchase with money must be circumcised. When Joseph came out of, um, or when Joseph was sold into slavery, went to Egypt, and then when, when his brothers came to him to purchase food, they brought money. And it was a part of the story where Joseph put the money back into their bags when he sent them home so that he could use that to get them back. We know that money 
coinage, currency, was used as early as Abraham. So to say that that's why we give money now is a requirement because they didn't have it then, but we do now, that's ignorant. That's not truth. So again, a tithing system was used as a taxation for the Levitical priesthood. And there was actually three tithes, not one. There was the tithe of the priest, which was a 10% of your year's produce or year's flocks that was given as a sacrifice to feed the priesthood. There was a three-year, um, I'm sorry, an every year feast of feasts, or tithe of feasts, I'm sorry, where you actually took the tithe to the temple and you ate it yourself. So if you read the article, this goes into the words that are used to describe these because in Deuteronomy 14, when it talks about the tithe of the feasts, the word tithing there actually signifies to enrich yourself or to accumulate a tenth and then to enrich yourself. And by the way, in Deuteronomy 14 was the only time that money was to be used in place of produce. And it was then only if you didn't have the ability to take your tithe to the temple, you could sell your tithes, go to the temple, buy again food and wine and strong drink, it says, and then eat it and drink it and be merry there before the Lord. So again, tithing was never about money. So this is the crux. If a New Testament preacher or pastor, or leader, evangelist, missionary, whatever it is, if they come preaching the message that you have to give your tithes, or God's going to curse you, they're lying to you. Because it's not in the New Testament commandments. If it was, Peter would have taught it, Paul would have taught it, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all the apostles who created the foundation of the New Testament church, who, by the way, were taught by Jesus Christ, they would have taught the lesson and they would have made it very clear you had to give of your tithe to be a part of the New Testament church. They never did because it's not a requirement. Now, what is so important not to get from what I'm saying is I'm not saying don't give. We need to give. It was a New Testament example to give. Give to the poor, feed the hungry. James said, pure religion and undefiled before this is that we visit the widows and the fatherless in their time of distress and care for them, feed them. The Bible says that if somebody comes to you and says, I'm cold and I'm hungry, and you say, well, go and be blessed, be warm and be fed but you don't give them anything to feed themselves with or to clothe themselves with, if you don't help meet their need, you are not being a Christian. So of course we have to give. But a preacher that comes by preaching that you give your money to me to satisfy God is a liar. And furthermore, it's important to recognize that you've got to be doing the giving the way God wants you to give it. Paul said in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, I believe, that, that God loves a cheerful giver and you're not to give out of compulsion. And compulsion is being persuaded or made to. You're being made to believe that you have to do this. And thus, it's an obligation. It's not a giving from your heart. And God wants us to give of our money, of our time, of our resources to feed hungry people, to show others the love of God, to deliver medicines, deliver waters, help shelters, deliver clothing, the things that people really need. And let me wrap this up by asking a very important question. Does that pastor who's demanding you pay tithes, driving typically a luxury vehicle, living in a very nice home, dressed in extremely expensive clothing, does he need your resources? And more importantly, this is my experience, does he demand that you never give to any charitable organization? You give your money to him and he'll decide what's best with it. That's a serious, serious question. And I believe that borders right on the line of what the Bible calls filthy lucre. So I hope that you would go read the article that's a companion to this video. This is just a short description uh, of what a tithe is, who it was for, and why it's not a New Testament commandment. 
If it was a commandment, it would be an obligation, and God doesn't want an obligation. Yes, we need to help the ministry. Yes, we need to feed people. Yes, it takes money to have padded pews and air conditioning, and if you go to a church built in like that. But more importantly, it takes money to feed people. It takes money to teach children and have Sunday school and put gas in buses and buy the buses and, and buy food for them. And, and in my case, you know, if I saw a kid with tattered up shoes, I'd go buy him a pair of shoes. It takes money to do that. That's got to be something from the heart not a demand or a commandment. God loves a cheerful giver. So let's give to God's kingdom cheerfully. We're not buying Armani suits and BMWs and Mercedes and mansions and crystal palaces. We should be buying food and medicine and clothing and helping these people who desperately need help because it's in that moment of giving of yourself to them, time and finances, that they then see the love of Christ and become drawn to his light it's not about enriching somebody. It's about making the kingdom of God appear before these people and that they would draw themselves to it. The Bible says, if you draw nigh unto him, God, he will draw nigh unto you. So God bless. I hope this helps. Please read the companion article on blog. It'll be linked in the description of this video. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, share the video, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.